Hello and happy Christmas everyone. Welcome to our Christmas Day service. It's recorded for St Mary's and Christchurch and the villages around Ely and anybody else who would like to join in. My name's Chris and I'm the Rector of St Mary's and the Ely team. We're so happy that you're joining us today. Whoever you are, wherever you're from, you are welcome here. Christmas is traditionally a time of comfort and joy, but in a difficult year like 2020, the comfort part seems much more important than the joy in some ways. We're aware for, that for some people in our city, this has been a particularly tough year. Some have lost their livelihoods, some have lost their homes, and some have even lost loved ones. And for you, Christmas 2020 may not feel like a time of joy. We want you to know that we stand alongside you in prayer and in any practical way that we can. Let's begin with this Lutheran prayer for courage, which we've used a number of times during 2020. Let's pray. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, hopefully you've been following the events at the stable outside the church. Here it was that snowy morning earlier in Advent. Please do visit it on your walk and go to our website to discover the people and the activities around it. So let's begin our service. Please do say the words in bold. I bring you good news of great joy. A saviour has been born to us. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. He is Christ the Lord, alleluia. We worship and adore him, alleluia. Lord Jesus Christ, your birth at Bethlehem draws us to kneel in wonder at heaven touching earth. Accept our heartfelt praise as we worship you, our Saviour and our eternal God. Amen. And now our first carol. Thanks to uh, Harry Endersby Marsh and Andy Dykes for this rendition of God rest you merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Saviour was born on Christmas Day. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Saviour was born on Christmas Day. To save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort. the story you just don't get told but this is truth proof god love the earth approved teenage birth dirt hoof and hurt inverted worth in that worthless back room gloomy shack and human womb this is upside down come meet the king who put aside the crown the same hands that made the skies outstanding and the tides dry ground clutch straws surrounding as angels worship in the night men commission genocide mothers that never meant to cry survive as their offspring die Crimes to welcome the Lord in a refugee born in a battle that's roaring.
that he's outpouring Seeing imperfection, healing our infection Unpeel what's concealed, the misdirection has conned us We've all failed the inspection of conduct And now it's dead collection We can't compare with none spare Escape is beyond us, but there's a plan Baby boy deployed to help, helpless man When we weren't able, this the fable Gone in a stable, Abraham Isaac on a table, cornered ram Child in a makeshift cradle Spotless lamb slain for a world unstable Hope began, paid this band the Lord God is able Father, we do thank you that this Christmas, whoever we are, whatever our circumstances, you still bring us comfort and joy. Amen. And now Sophia is going to bring us our Bible reading from the book of John, reminding us that Jesus is the light of the world. This reading is taken from John 1 verses 1 to 14. Before anything else existed, there was Christ with God. He has always been alive and is himself God. He created everything there is. Nothing exists that he didn't make. Eternal life is in him, and this life gives light to all mankind. His life is the light that shines through the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent John the Baptist as a witness to the fact that Jesus Christ is the true light. John himself was not the light. He was only a witness to identify it. Later on, the one who is the true light arrived to shine on everyone coming into the world. But although he made the world, the world didn't recognise him when he came, even, though his, even in his own land and his mother's home people, the Jews, he was not accepted. Only a few would welcome and receive him. But to all who, would receive, who received him, he gave the right to become children of God. All they needed to do was to trust him to save them. All those who believe this are reborn, not a physical rebirth resulting from human compassion or plan but the one from the will of God. And Christ became human being and lived here on earth among us and was full of loving forgiveness and truth. And some of us have seen this glory, the glory of the Son of the Heavenly Father. If you open a Bible on page one, the creation story starts, In the beginning, God. And the reading of the Christmas story that Sophia has just read so beautifully starts, In the beginning was Jesus, the Word. We discover that Christmas is a reset for humanity, a new creation. It represents a fresh start for God's people everywhere. So here in the Ely team on Christmas Day, we are celebrating a new beginning, the dawning of a new light in the world. Just as for us, the hint of sunlight in the east in the morning is a telltale sign that a new day is beginning. So Jesus, infant eyes opening to the morning light on that very first Christmas day is the sign of a new era dawning for all of us. A sign that God's light is coming into the world through Jesus. It's a sign of the life, vitality and aliveness which can only be found in Jesus. His radiance is breaking in to light the path for all people everywhere. This is God's gift to us. Yes, you and me. 
But of course, uh, such a gift isn't always universally welcomed. We can create all sorts of reasons to turn the gift down, can't we? Some of us would prefer to wait. Lord, yes, but not yet. Some will deliberately duck the gift altogether to avoid our shady plans coming into the light. Some of us reject the gift because our lifestyle will be exposed. Our manipulative nature will come to light. Our business dealings will be challenged. Our prejudices will be seen for what they are. So we prefer to stay in darkness. But if this is you, I'd encourage you to welcome the light this Christmas day. Receive Jesus as a gift this Christmas. And as you receive him, open yourself up to God's holy, radiant aliveness streaming into your life. And in receiving God's gift, you can begin to live as a member of God's family, as an intentional part of God's creation. You can start living in the light. If you are resisting it, I implore you to welcome the light of life into your life and to let it signal a new start for your life. The dark night has ended and the day lies open before us. This light is a transforming light. It will be uncomfortable at first. It will expose things in our lives which we might think would be better hid in darkness. But as the darkness recedes, we discover a new path lighting up before us, a life-giving path, a path of grace and forgiveness for us personally and through you and me for all those we love. What a change will happen. It's described in the Bible as being born again. It's so dramatic. A 180 degree turn, a new beginning. But accepting this gift is not just for your benefit or mine. God has much bigger plans than that. He wants your light out there to join the other lights shining in his global village. And you might well find yourself praying for the world. Your kingdom come, Lord. May good overcome evil. May justice overcome inequality. May life overcome death. And may I play my part in all of that happening. Yet Jesus' birth signals the beginning of the end of the dark night of fear, of the hostility, violence and greed which devastate our world. And you and I are called to play a part in that. Jesus' birth signals the start of a new day, a new way, a new understanding of what it means to be alive, a new life, a gift made available to everyone by God's grace. I've found since I started praying that this new life flows not from taking, but from giving. And that's become a pleasure for me. Not from fear, but from faith, which has become more authentic every day in my life. Not from conflict, but from reconciliation, even with those I previously saw as my enemies. Not from domination, but from service, which I have found to be so much more satisfying. This life springs up from our innermost being like a fountain of living water. It intoxicates us like the best wine ever. I can vouch that it has turned my life from a picnic into a banquet. This life-giving light and love opens us up to rethink everything, to go back and become like little children again, in whose frame of mind we can rediscover the world with a fresh-like, childlike wonder seeing the world in a new light, the light of Christ. On that dark first Christmas night, in such a humble place, made flesh in a tiny, vulnerable, displaced, defenceless baby, God's light began to shine. In that newborn baby lying in that simple manger, there stirs more potential, more power, more wisdom, more grace that can be found in any business convention, any army, any laboratory, any church. To be alive in the adventures of Jesus is to be fully alive forever, even now. Let a new day, a new creation, a new you, a new me begin. Let there be light. If you want to let the light break into your life this Christmas, then I will light a candle and pray. 
This is the final Advent candle from our Advent wreath, representing the arrival of Jesus into our lives. Heavenly Father, we light this candle to remind ourselves that in Christ you are with us. That we can choose to walk in the light of Christ. Heavenly Father, this Christmas, help us to understand the plans you have for our lives. The plans for us to live lives of hope and meaning. Lives which make a mark for your kingdom. I thank you, Father, that you invite me into your family on Christmas Day and every day. I accept your invitation. Help me to begin a walk with you today. And if you have prayed that prayer, then get an online Bible on your phone and read Luke's Gospel, which begins with the Christmas story. And then join us here again in the new year as we discover God's purposes for us together. Amen. Let's continue to invite God's light into our lives as we sing Once in Royal David City, led once again by the St Mary's worship teams.
We turn now to a time of confession where we can take some time to bring to God those things in our lives that we'd like to make amends for, those things we'd like to turn our back on, those things we need to leave behind. They might be hurtful things that we've done or things that we've forgotten to do as we try to follow the way of Jesus. Please join in with the words in bold. Lord of grace and truth, the Virgin Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. Forgive our disobedience to your will. Your son, our Saviour, was born in poverty in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. The shepherds left their flocks to go to Bethlehem. Forgive our self-interest and lack of vision. The wise men followed the star to find Jesus the King. Forgive our reluctance to seek you. And so may the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself, that you may behold the glory of his Son and be cleansed of your sin. Amen. And now an opportunity to declare our faith in God. If you'd like to, please join in at home. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Now I'm going to hand over to the Kim family who are going to lead us in our prayers today. Dear Lord, we pray first for those living in parts of the world where their life is hard. For those living in countries where there is conflict, we pray for strength and patience for those working for peace, and that the next generation will learn to work together and not perpetuate old hatreds. For those living in countries where access to food, health care, shelter and education is a struggle, we pray that their leadership in those places work for change for those at the margins of society. And we ask that you would show us where we can play our part in sharing what we have with those in need. We pray for all those in positions of authority across the world, that they would act and govern with integrity, humility, and wisdom. We pray for our country. Lord, thank you for all those who have worked serving others in one way or another this year, and for those working to get today to keep essential services running. Please help those who need to relax and recover this Christmas, find time and space to rest. We pray for our country's leaders that they would help to bring unity as people face the challenges and changes of the coming year. Lord, we pray for those in our community in whom we know personally and who are unwell at this moment. Please give them your peace for those who are feeling especially lonely at this time. Please help them to know your love. For those who are struggling financially, we, put, we pray for hope for the future. In these difficult times, please, please help us to put it put it into action, loving our neighbour as ourselves, and to serve those who need helping, a helping hand or kind word at this time. As we wait for some return to normal life in 2021, I pray that you would help us to learn to wait patiently and to wait positively. Thank you that at Christmas we are reminded again that you are God with us, with us in the good times, but also with us when we are worried and when things are hard. Please help us to hold on to that truth today. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Let's gather all of our prayers together today in the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Please do join in at home. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And finally, we pray our giving prayer, offering the money we give to all the team churches for their work in the community and amongst our mission partners. Generous God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, at your table we present our gifts to aid the work you have given us to do. Use them, use us, in the service of your world, to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. So as we draw towards the end of our service this morning, we have one last carol for us to join in with. Hark the herald angels sing, reminding us that on Christmas morning, Jesus left the glory of heaven to make sure we have a second chance a second birth, the Bible calls it, into eternal life.
So thank you once again for joining us this morning. A big thank you to everybody who has participated today, our musicians, our readers, our prayers. We're closed this Sunday, the 27th of December, but we're back in church and online on the 3rd of January. Let's continue to look out for our neighbours and pick up the phone, even today, to make sure nobody is completely alone and struggling. If you've joined us for the first time, we'd love to hear from you. Do drop us an email at the church office and say hello. And so the peace. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Goodbye, everyone. I wish you comfort and joy this Christmas. Amen. <laughs>